y'all welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jenna morrow i'm the founder and principal designer of morrow design studios which is a full service residential and commercial interior design firm located in the dc area but we serve clients nationwide welcome to my youtube channel it's a channel that's for my fellow home dwellers who want to design a home that they love and my fellow entrepreneurs who want to create an entrepreneurship journey that they are proud of on this channel, you'll get design tips, tricks, inspiration, but you're also going to get really candid behind the scenes looks at my journey as an entrepreneur and interior designer. On today's video, I want to talk about six design mistakes that I see so many homeowners make, including one that my husband repeatedly made when we were dating. But before we jump in, if you like interior design and home design content or entrepreneurship content, I invite you to hit that subscribe button below so you never miss a future video when it goes live. Now, let's get into these six design mistakes. Number one, hanging wall art too high. Y'all, let me tell you, when I visited my then boyfriend, now husband for the first time, his wall art was practically on the ceiling. I was like, oh my gosh, this is way too high. Don't be like my husband. Wall art and wall decor in a home is supposed to be seen and appreciated, but you can't do that if it's hung too high. So the best way to hang wall art and wall decor is to actually hang it at eye level. If you're like me, type A, you want a very specific number that you can follow, good guidance is to hang the center of the wall art 57 inches from the floor. However, this tip works best in a house that has seven, eight, or nine foot ceilings, which is the average ceiling height in a home. When the ceiling is higher, there are other things you have to do to consider how high the wall art should be hung, but I'm gonna do a video in the future about how to hang wall art on a higher ceiling. Number two, buying matching furniture sets. This was a thing when my parents were furniture shopping, but in 2023, we're not buying matching furniture sets anymore. This is especially true when you think about your dining room sets and kitchen eating sets, and you're probably wondering why not? It all goes together, it's easy. Design spaces should be curated, and what I mean by that is it should be a collection of pieces that vary by color, scale, shape, and when you buy a furniture set, it makes a room look very flat and one-dimensional. A design space should have visual interest that allows your eye to wander around the room and take in all of the individual elements that, when they're brought together, create a beautifully curated space. So let's leave the matching furniture sets in the past where they belong and start to get a little more creative and curate a space that consists of different design styles, colors, textures, different elements. The space actually looks designed. Number three, using the wrong area rug size and placing it in the wrong place. I'll do a longer video on this in the future, but for now, the point of an area rug is to ground a space. When you have furniture in a room that's not on top of an area rug, the furniture can look like it's floating. An area rug should bring everything together, but the key is selecting the right size and putting it in the right place, which a lot of people don't get right. So to keep it simple, let's talk about a living room, and there are one of two rules you can follow when it comes to area rug placement and size. Rule number one, all four legs of your conversational pieces, sofa, accent chairs, all four legs of those pieces should fit on the rug, or rule number two, the front legs of those conversational pieces should fit on the rug. Follow one of those two rules for a standard room, like a living room or a family room, and you can't go wrong. Number four, lighting a room incorrectly. Let me tell y'all, not all lighting is made equal. For starters, there are different light temperatures that cast different shades. There's soft white, there's bright white, and there's daylight. Soft white casts a yellow shade, and it's, it, it's ideal for a space like a bedroom where you want that softer light put it on your nightstand lamp, or put it in a task light, like a reading light. Bright white works well in high traffic areas like a family room or a dining room, living room. And then daylight, those light temperatures actually mimic the daylight, so it casts a blue shade, and those are ideal in spaces that get a lot of natural light during the day, like a sunroom or a family room that is two stories high. The other key for lighting is using different styles of light. So a good tip you should follow is to have three sources of light in a room. Overhead lighting like recess lighting or chandelier, accent lighting like a picture light or table lamp, and task lighting like a swing arm floor lamp, again, a reading light, something that you can use when you're handling an individual task. I'll do another video on this in the future, but for now, these are good tips to follow to get the lighting right in your home 
to make sure that you have the right temperature and to make sure you have the right styles of lighting in a room. Number five, designing a space without an aesthetic. This is a big one that happens with clients all the time. They'll want to hire us and say, I just need accent chairs and area rug, but then you walk into their home and the room they want us to design does not have one look and feel. The foundational pieces in the room are from so many different design styles. Now don't get me wrong, it's okay to mix one, two, maybe three design styles in a room, but you really have to know what you're doing. So if you aren't a designer yourself or you don't want to hire one, my advice to you would be stick to one aesthetic and bring it to life in the room. The best way to do this is figure out what design style you like and then find a store that matches that aesthetic. If you like mid-century modern, West Elm's your place. If you like transitional, try Crate and Barrel. If you like contemporary, try a place like TOB Furniture. Get your foundational pieces from one store and then find your accents at other locations. And your accents can be a different design style, but again, I highly recommend engaging a designer so you make sure you execute it correctly. But if you want cohesiveness in a room, don't mix a whole bunch of different styles. Try to stick to one, maybe two, and your room will look beautifully designed. Number six, overdoing it. I always remind my clients that you have to give the eye an opportunity to breathe in a room. What I mean by that is I see so many people if there's a wall, they want to put wall art on it. If there's a corner, there has to be decor there. I promise that's not the case. You want to give the eye an opportunity to breathe when you are entering a room. And so you have to embrace white space, or what I refer to as white space. And that means just leaving a couple areas blank, maybe leaving a wall blank, maybe leaving a corner blank. But when you overwhelm the eye by putting so much in a room, those small details and small elements get lost, often overlooked, and it can be just extremely overwhelming. Embrace white space, give your eye a chance to breathe, and don't overdo it. That's it for today. If you like this video, I do have more design content on the way, so hit that subscribe button below, and you'll catch each video as it goes live. If you want some more short tips, tricks, and design inspiration, I am on Instagram, and I invite you to follow me there, at Jenna Morrow. That's all I've got for y'all today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.